Let's ask God to shed light on his word tonight as we open it. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of these hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I invite you to turn in your Bibles tonight to the summary of God's law that we find in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 12. I'm looking at verses 28 to 34, found on page 1572 in your pew Bibles. One of the conversations that Jesus has with the religious leaders during that final week of his ministry before his arrest and crucifixion, focusing on the greatest commandment. Mark 12, beginning at verse 28. We hear in God's word. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord, is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one, and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. From then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Friends, the word of the Lord. And I want to credit uh, Pastor Kevin Miller on some helpful material for this message tonight. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, an important question to consider. What does God want from you? What does he expect? Do you know? That's a question that every person has to answer. Since God is sovereign over everything and everyone, you and I need to know what God expects from us. That knowledge would be very important to know how you and I ought to live our lives every day. It would change the way we drive. It would change the way we respond to other people's driving. It would change the checks we write. It would change the websites that we look at. So let me ask again, do you know what God expects from you? You need to know. Our scripture tonight is important because here we find out from Jesus himself what God wants from us more than anything else. When asked by a teacher of the law, Jesus declares that the greatest commandment is to love God entirely and to love our neighbor as ourself. One day, a man with a Ph.D. in religious studies, a teacher of the law, asked Jesus, of all the commandments of God, which one is the most important? In other words, which command is the greatest? It's not an easy question to answer. As you know, there are many commandments from God in the Bible. The first five books of the Bible, as you know, are called the Torah, the law. They show us what pleases God. Here in these books, we find the Ten Commandments, where God says, don't steal, for example, because that hurts the people that I love, and it destroys community. Don't commit murder because you kill the people I love, the people I created, and so on. 
The rabbis counted up all these commands of God, and they counted out 613 different commands. They debated regularly which of these commands, these 613, were most important. They attempted to differentiate between heavy or great and also light or little commands. Which one is at the core? Is it more important not to steal or is it more important not to murder people? Which command, if you get it right, means that you pretty much have done everything else right? That you're living the will of God and doing what pleases Him? Well, Jesus answers this teacher of the law immediately. The most important one is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus recites the Shema, the confession of faith that Jewish men and women recited every day at every service, every day of their lives as well. And he shares that first commandment. We all understand that commandment. The most important command is to love God with everything that we've got. We mustn't hold anything back. Our entire life should be a gift of love to God, our heart, the core of what we are, our soul, our passions and emotions, our mind, our intellect, and our mental capacity, and our strength, our will, and our stamina. And then Jesus says there's a second most important command that ties in with the first one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do you want to know what God wants from you, what he wants more than anything else? Well, it's very simple. Love. It all comes down to love. That's what God cares about. That's what God thinks is central. That's what he commands us to do. And it's not just a love for God that somehow... Uh, keeps us or uh, prevents us from, from loving other people. No. The most important, these two most important commandments go together, like your right and your left hand. When you love God and you love other people, you've just offered up to God the one sacrifice that is most pleasing to Him. God asks nothing else from you. Get this and you've got it. Love God and love the people around you. Well, brothers and sisters, that's good news and that's bad news. The good news is what God asks of us, anyone can do. No matter how much education you have, no matter how much money you have, no matter what you look like or what you've gone through, we can all please God because we can all love God and love other people. Well, now the bad news. Bad news is we don't do it. God commands us to do it and Jesus calls us to do it, but we know within ourselves that we really don't love God with all of our heart. Instead, we love him with some of our heart, and a little bit of our soul, and a fraction of our mind, and a portion of our strength. The rest we keep for ourselves. The reality is we have these pockets of rebellion in our hearts where we resist God and we don't surrender everything to Him in love. We love Him to some extent, but we keep Him out of certain areas. You know, maybe for you, it's your kids and grandkids. 
God can have any part of you, you think to yourself, but if anything happens to your kids or your grandkids, God has stepped over the line and you're not sure if you could follow him anymore if something happened to them. Or consider money. That's a hard one for many of us. I heard about our cartoon and I, and I came across it entitled, The Baptism where the person is completely underwater in a baptism ceremony, except for one hand, which is still sticking up out of the water, as you can see. And you can see also what's in that person's hand. They're clutching their wallet. Most of us understand that because for a lot of us, it's hard to love God with all of our wallet. I'm very grateful that Sherry and I decided early on in our marriage that we would consistently give a tithe of, of everything that he had given to us. It just became a regular practice in our marriage that we've continued to do. We see that as, as a way to be faithful. And it's a spiritual discipline for us. And I trust it's a discipline for many of you. But I struggle in other ways to fully love God. God wants me to take good care of my body. But I find it far too easy to eat more and to exercise less than I should, for example. Just had my yearly physical last week, and my doctor told me I need to eat less and exercise more. And, and frankly, folks, that's a struggle for me. I struggle in general with putting what I want over what God wants. In my pride, I still want to be in charge of my own life instead of letting God be fully in charge of my life because, in fact, he really is. Like you, I know I, how hard it is to, for my heart, which doesn't fully trust God, to, to fully love him, to pour myself out for him, to, to freely give to him because of the fact that he has freely given himself completely for me. And frankly, folks, I hate that in me. Why do I find it so hard to do what Jesus said and to love God with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength? Every week, it's only in simple honesty for you and me to confess to God, Father, we have not loved you with our whole hearts. But I want to love God with my whole heart. Don't you? Well, as we continue in this account, the teacher of the law agrees and he recognizes that love of God and neighbor is more important than any sacrifice that we could give. The law expert answers Jesus, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying that God is one and there is none but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Law teacher is probably thinking about verses in the Hebrew scriptures that emphasize what Jesus has just declared. Samuel told King Saul, for example, in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. The Lord said through Hosea, in Hosea 6, verse 6, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God, rather than burnt offerings. And Solomon says in Proverbs 21, verse 3, To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Rabbi Hillel, the elder, who lived until the early years of Jesus' earthly life, summarized God's law similarly to Jesus when he said, what you yourself hate, do not do to your neighbor. This is the whole law. The rest is commentary. Well, Jesus then commends the law teacher as being close to God's kingdom. When Jesus hears the law expert's insightful answer, he tells him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. The scribe's openness and humility before God is the right attitude to have. 
And his enthusiastic approval of Jesus' teaching shows that he's attracted to the one through whom God has brought God's kingdom near. The teacher is on the doorstep of God's reign. If he would say yes to Jesus in faith, he would step over the threshold and enter God's kingdom where he reigns over the earth and the creation and the lives of his people. Well, what's true of the teacher of the law is also true of us. There's one thing that we can do to help us to grow in how much we love God. It's very simple. My suggestion is that you say one word to God. And that word is this. Yes. You ask, yeah, but what am I saying yes to? Important question to answer. In order to know the answer to that question, you have to listen to God. That doesn't come easy for us because if you live a normal life here in West Michigan, that normal life will be so busy, so distracted, and so tiring that you'll find it nearly impossible to hear God. You end up with nothing to say yes to. When we slow down and really listen to God, one of the first things that you're going to hear from him is, I love you. Now maybe you say, you know, when I get quiet, I don't hear I love you. I hear, well, you have messed up again. That's your own recording playing inside your head. Maybe that's what you heard from your parents or your teachers or yourself, but that's not God. When God talks to you, he talks to you in love. Even when he corrects you, and he will, he does it in love. When you hear God say, I love you, here's what you say back. Yes. With your will, open it up by the grace of God and say, yes, God, I hear you. And I receive that and I accept that. I choose not to accept my natural self-hatred or my natural self-absorption. When you say yes to God's love for you, you'll find it a lot easier to do the second commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. What you've been experiencing from God, you start to pass on to other people. God fills us with his spirit and his love and we surprise ourselves because we find ourselves loving people that we would never otherwise love. God has forgiven your junk so you can forgive somebody else's. God has been patient with you when you've been slow to grow up so you can be patient with that person in your family or in your church group or on the job who is immature and doesn't ever change. It's really uncanny, but if you say yes to God, you'll automatically end up loving your neighbor too. Pastor Kevin Miller shares a testimony about that from his own life that those of us that are married or have been married can relate to. He says this, In 1980, when I was walking down the street in Wheaton, Illinois, thinking about some Bible verses I had read, I felt like God was saying to me, Husbands... Love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. I was about to get engaged, he says. I knew that Jesus had died for the church, so it meant sacrifice. But without really thinking about all the implications of what it would mean for me to love Karen that way, I just said, yes. Shortly after Karen and I got married, my dad came to visit in our apartment, and after dinner, I got up and cleared the dishes from the table, and my dad looked at me and said, Boy, you are henpecked. I could feel his disapproval and shame, like stinging needle needles all over my skin, but I shook them off because God had said to me, Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, and I had said yes to God. It was a bad day for me, 
though, when I learned that Karen's love language is acts of service. Why couldn't it be something easy like gifts, he says, so I could stop at the corner stand and get a dozen roses for $9.99 and be done with it? No. For her, love meant actually serving her, like moving the laundry from the washer to the dryer. My twin brother always says, I don't go near those big white boxes in the basement, and that's the way I felt. But when God speaks to you, if you're going to say yes, it will mean that it will take you to new places, including standing next to the dryer in the basement. And when you say yes to God, you end up loving him more, and you also automatically end up loving your neighbor more. So now let me make this personal. Let me ask this question. What is God saying to you tonight? For some of you, you know exactly what God has been saying to you and asking of you, but you don't know if you can say yes. Just say yes. Tell him that you will love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give him everything you've got because when you say yes to God, you'll grow in love for him and you'll grow in love for your neighbor. So how well are we demonstrating our love for God and our neighbor? We'll demonstrate God's greatest command faithfully and far more fully as we tell him with all of our hearts. Yes. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful that you do tell us what you want from us in your word. And that, Lord, in gratitude for all that you have done for us, we have the privilege of being able to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But, Lord, we confess tonight that we don't do that perfectly. Far from it. Our hearts are still filled with spaces that are not fully devoted to you. And, dear Lord, we pray that you would help us to more fully love you and so, as a result of that, to love our neighbor. And, Lord, help us to do that by saying yes to what you ask us to do. And Lord, may that response help us to grow in our love for you and for those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.